Christian is part of an evil man's DNA because we all want to go home for Christmas, you know, go home for New Year festivals and everything. Am I, am I saying the right thing? So, and that is where tourism is all about, and that is what we will talk about today. So, we're going to look at tourism in a new way that you've never, ever thought about before. And before we do that, we have to talk about the number one thing, which is what we know about tourism in Enugu State. And when we talk about tourism in Enugu State, a few places flash in your mind. Number one, we know about Ohu Monastery, we know about um, EQK Hills, we know about um, um, the very wonderful um, Akuke Sand Beach. And we know, all know about the Go Pine Forest. There are other places that we don't know and nobody has ever thought about. Like Ikirike Hills. How many of us have gone to Ikirike Hills here? It's the peak of Enugu town. Nobody knows about Oku, a local government that has over seven waterfalls, over 11 caves, and a measurable number of caves. Nobody talks about the mind-blowing Ease Waterfall, which is an Ezimo local government here in Enugu State, which is the tallest waterfall in the entire southeast, over 250 feet high. What do you have to say, Yoga? Well, we have some other hills like um, the Ozala Hill. We have the Opi Hill in Opi. We also have hills like the Shube Hills, and these are peaks of Enugu State. Enugu State is very fine. It has, it has one of the best scenic views, you know. And um, as we all know, Enugu State has the best delicacies. Oba being, Oba the Oko being the king of, of them all. I heard the previous speaker talk about Oba, and we keep exporting it. People actually don't want to associate with, with it, but you see them traveling outside the Nubu with it. So we have other places coming down to caves and um, you know waterfalls. We have we have the um, um, Iziago Tourist Complex, which is one of the most popular you know tourist attract attractions in Nubu. We also have hills that are very close to us. We have one just behind us. We have the Miyokin Hill. I remember one of my um, um, trips back to Enugu from Anambra State, where we had to take um, the Miyokin route, trying to avoid traffic um, on the Potakoto Wire Expressway. Actually, we, we still got stuck in traffic, but one thing stood out. The view from the hill that evening, I think it was around 7 o'clock, the view was amazing. Enugu was little. Enugu is beautiful. Enugu and Maka is our own. Do you understand? And we, 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 we came up with this, you know, groups to help sell what we have. I, I remember back in the days when I was, um, you know, quite young, one of my first experiences as a hiker, um, that was with one of the educational camps we had back then, Rohi Camp. So during one of the activities, we had a hill slash party. That was, that was one of my most interesting hikes and parties growing up. So on... One of the activities, um, the location of the party was um, one of the hills in Osaka. Uh, yeah, the popular vet, vet hill. I don't know if you guys. Very close to, uh, behind the veterinary department of the University of Nigeria, Osaka. So, on climbing up that hill, it was interesting, it was fun. When we got to the top, it was the climax for me because the view was amazing. You, you see the clear view of UNN and you see rolling hills beyond it. It was beautiful. I came back from that hike thinking to myself, you know, of how I could attend such events and how I could connect people to also experience it at its best. That's why um, some years, I'm fast forward to now, I'm based in Enugu. So sometime last, um, last year, that was 20, 2019, before the COVID, um, December, I had a discussion with uh, my co-founder, um, you know, Mr. Ikena Ikumelo. So we were thinking, we were like, how are we going to bring about something? Something that will change the idea of um, fun in Enugu. Something that will create a new sense of fun and activity in Enugu. Something that will connect people. So we talked about Nautical East, and January 2020 we started. We had our first hike, second hike, and in April, COVID hit. So, and you know now, everybody was indoors. There was, you know, restriction, movement and all that. We were all scared of coming out to interact. But what, what, what got to me was the, the flair the hikers had. They were sending messages in the group, asking questions of when next are we going to hike, where is the next location. So that, you know, that made us plan better. And of course, we had another hike. That was um, sometime in March. Matching. During that COVID period, of course, we, we adhere to the COVID rules. 
know. So the hike was was successful. I don't know if you can show the picture. Um, one of the, that, the next one slide. Of the, yeah, this slide. One of the pictures there is um, we are on on Cool Camp Hill. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, moving on. So my question, my, my story is quite interesting because I grew up in Onicha, you know. So I was very much accustomed to the markets and everything. But in 2013, I did an admission to study engineering. Yes, I did engineering in Enugu State University. And coming into Enugu, I was I was wild. I was it was I was I was flabbergasted. The environment, the scenery, everything was so beautiful. And I thought to myself, I need to tap into this, I need to explore this. So I, the first thing I did, I, called, I took a couple of friends, let's go explore this hill. So we started 2014, 2015, and we started doing this, and we called ourselves Campus Hikers. And in 2018, we met as a brand, and we gave back to the t-shirt I'm wearing right now, which is Hikers Trail. So I know everybody's asking, what is Hikers Trail? Hikers Trail is a group of young, energetic explorers and adventurers that have found a way to infuse fun, entertainment, and culture into telling our collective history and our collective traditions. Now, in Hikers Trail, over the years, we've visited over 100 locations. We've toured um, over 300 places. We've done um, grown from a, a, a small group of about seven persons to having a larger social media page, growing of about seven to 10,000 people right now. So we've grown into a massive family. And the beautiful thing about Hikers Trail is that we don't just visit locations. We tell stories about those locations. Now, moving up, uh, the next slide will show you uh, what we did at the coal mines in Enugu. So we know that Enugu is called the coal mines, right? But why is it called the coal mine? So we decided to explore and find out this very energetic young man that you're seeing on the screen. He's the last coal miner that we ever saw. And he was able to take us through the coal mine, tell us stories about the coal mine. And he was so captivated knowing how the coal mine worked and why Enugu was called the coal mine. And after that, we took beautiful pictures and I had a coal. I forgot to bring mine here. I would have shown you my coal. I picked up my coal and it was very, very beautiful. So we, we're not just about having fun. We're not just about going out. We're about telling our collecting stories in a very beautiful way. We have, what is, we are also all about fun. We've, uh, you know, uh, organized activities where we go for hikes, rallies, vacations, you know, picnics. And we've planned events um, that invited people that stay outside in the to come into town and, you know, sign up and join into this, experiencing these places. You know, people, people that stay outside in the when you tell them about Enugu, they will, they will tell you that there's nothing here. But there is actually something here. We have, we have sites here. We have we have sites like um, the the a um, the, um, home a home waterfall. Yeah. We have caves. We have um, some other places. So Enugu basically tourism in Enugu basically is fast. We yeah. can stand up here for 30 minutes talking about tourism, but Enugu we are just scratching the surface of tourism in Enugu. Yeah, I'm talking about these things because I know everybody's asking. So how safe is these places, and what are the basic challenges that we face? Number one challenge that we always face is the issue of security. Of course, people want to go to places where they feel safe, they feel comfortable. And how do we solve this? We were able to engage the local vigilante people, which in Ibo is called in danger. Every community has it, right? So we engaged them and we were able to get a deal. They are, they are our tour guides, so they tell us where to go and where not to go. The second challenge that we also explore, explore and experience is the issue of structure. So if I want to go to a village, who do I talk to? Who do I meet? Who do I talk to? How do I show up? in the community with 70 to 100 persons and they will not our customers at you know you know at who start so do we solve this by making sure we go ahead of time so the pictures you're seeing on the screen right now is um the, the an event that happened in August. So it's called the Adju Festival. Adju Festival is an event that is held once in every three years. And Adju Festival is uh, an event that is heralded by the uh, heralded by the fact that young boys move from being young boys into men. It's done once in every three years. It was a very captivating event, and we had to write to them. We had to you know talk about it, and we they, they gave us the concept. We put it on social media, and a lot of people turned up, and it was a beautiful experience. The next thing that you see there, which is the picture you see here, is the Igwe of Oweni Town in Ogu. The Igwe, we also wrote to him and he welcomed us, he accustomed us, it was a very beautiful experience for us. So we don't just visit these locations, we also find a way to work with the locals that are there. Now, the next thing, of course, is, is a fascinating experience, is talking about, so how do we now take this to the next level, which is talking about investment, because, of course, it, it, all these things do not come cheap, you know? So, in talking about investment, we want everybody here to start thinking thinking and rethinking tourism. How do we package our New Year festivals? Every village here has a New Year festival, right? 
how do we package our New Year festivals into an event that can be big? How do we inculcate carnivals into what we do in our communities? How do we build a small resort in our community so that people can have their honeymoon and vacations and vacations? You know, people don't always have to go to Dubai or Rwanda, whatever they want to go to somewhere to have fun. They should have fun at our backyard. They should have fun within our community. What do you think, Diogo? Yeah, they should. And also talking about challenges, we have to talk about the major, one of the major challenges we are facing you know, as a tourist group, which is collaboration and sponsorship. I mean, the state governments will do their part by you know, making these sites and you know, tourist attract, attractive you know, points secure and accessible to us. But we also need sponsorship from you know, private, small-scale businesses, large-scale businesses to you know, be able to give us that fund. Because without funds, we, we can't we can't plan big hikes. We need funds to you know go outside. Then we need funds to do bigger things, plan bigger events that will attract people. Also, another challenge um, I feel is is quite important is also the self will. You know, the, the the government can do the much they can, but they can't come to your house to drag you out to join these groups. So you have to make a decision to come out, sign up. You know, join this group, experience in Nubu at its best. You know, you can only take a horse to the river, you can't force it to drink. Do you understand? So if if you if you have a normal Saturday, you can switch it up. Find a hiking group, find find a tourist group. We are many in here in Inubu. Sign up into one and follow the activities and you enjoy benefits of living in Inubu. You can't be proud to say I stay and reside in Inubu without, you know. And then wrapping up, we'd like to talk about, so what's next? Now we've talked about these ideas, what can you do? What's your home, what's your take home? What is the next thing for you? For us at the Brand in Hyper School, we're looking at being very intentional, very international about our packaging and our branding. So we are acting and we've currently started working on having bike rallies that you can see there. We invited the bikers, riders, is there any biker in the house? We invited bikers from all over Nigeria to come into Enugu to ride. The places like Ohum, we had to try and go call the Ohum Motorsport Rally, which is the picture that you see there. We are trying to do these things. We want to venture not into the conventional tourism that we, that we all know. By 2022, we are going to be having what you call that hill that you see there. It's called Ubu U8. We want to have an Ubu U8 rally. And then wrapping up, I want to tell you guys two things, just two things that you need to take home. Those two things are we need to be very intentional about our branding as a team, as a community, as a tribe, which is which means that Nkabo Kai, and the last one is Akudinolo. Nobody's going to do this for us. We can only package and brand ourselves by ourselves. Thank you. Thank you.